Hello and welcome everyone. In this tutorial I want to show you how to set up a working sidechain plugin project in the Juice framework. But before doing that I want to show you the basics of sidechaining because I noticed a lot of developers are not informed about sidechaining, what it means and what you can use it for yet. So I hope that I can solve two problems with this video. One of which is how to fulfill the technical requirements to make a sidechain project that actually works. And number two is that I want to inspire you to make a sidechain project at all. Let's start with number two because I like counting backwards. So let's say you have a beat and it has belts. You might want to put a compressor on it like Pro C2 and then you want to let it trigger by a different sound than the belts themselves. So these were the belts but now I'm activating sidechain and I'm sending a different track to this instance which is the kicks output Now that gives a little bit more space to the kick in the mix and it can make sense if you do that with a lot of the sounds that you have in a project. Now I could make the belts more aggressive. And you would hear the effect, the pumping of the sidechain compression more pronounced than with the small belts themselves but even with small belts you can hear a difference so in the context of a full song it makes a lot of a difference now a lot of people asking themselves why would you want to make new sidechain plugins if something like pro c2 already exists and you might also ask yourself why would you want to make a sidechain compressor in general if there are also plugins like lfo tool or that one plugin by shaper guys and nikki romero Kick kickstart was it called kickstart yeah um, where you essentially have a tempo sync tremolo that is being triggered or re-triggered by midi data obviously that is also a very efficient way to make something that acts a little bit like a sidechain compressor and some people would even go so far to say that when midi triggers the envelope then it is also some sort of sidechain but first of all i'm talking about audio sidechain here this video is not about midi and secondly i think that there are more applications to sidechaining than just ducking a bunch of sound when another sound appears and i want to show you an example for that I have some vocals here. I recorded these vocals for the tutorial so that everyone sees what sidechain is good for. I hope you are inspired of something, I guess. And I will put a plug in on this track. I already have it here. And also, also an imager just to add a little bit of stereo width. Now you have probably noticed that it is still sort of the vocals. Yep, that's true. That's still sort of the vocals, but something else happened as well. You also notice this plugin has no parameters yet, except the, you know, main parameters that are in every one of my plugins. So whatever is going on there doesn't need parameters and it still sounds very fancy. So what's going on? I'm sending the belts to the plugin and I'm basically just multiplying whatever is in the belts with whatever is in here. That has multiple effects here, actually. So let me change that parameter that I showed you earlier on the belts and how it affects this sound.
As you have probably heard, the fact that I have a sidechain compressor on the bells now also sort of floats over to the vocals and the vocals now seem to have the same sidechain compressor on them. And on top of that, I'm getting some sort of textural change on the vocals that sort of melts the texture of the bells with the vocals. And that's what just happens when you multiply two signals together. This is basically a sidechain ring modulator. And the thing is, I have not seen a lot of sidechain ring modulators yet. And I want to make my own, by the way. So this is the start of a nice little project. Then there is also Native Instruments Freak, which also has a sidechain section, which is probably working very similarly. I have not tried it yet because the sidechain section always doesn't work in Cubase and I had Cubase when I bought this plugin and I just didn't think of it uh, since then except now. So uh, I need to try that actually at some point but Freak is the only example I know of a sidechain ring modulator and that's very sad. So I want to encourage you all to you know just get a little bit more creative with sidechaining in the future. Sidechaining is not just pumping kicks and bass lines, it can be anything you can think of that has to do with two signals coming together in some way. So please get creative now and make your nice sidechain applications. And now I will show you how to set that up in the most basic way so that you can get started. Okay, so first of all, I want to apologize to everyone because the project that I'm going to show you now is obviously the project of the plugin that I'm currently working on. So of course, I will put the link into the description, but if you look at it and looks different from this video then it's probably just because I keep on working on that. Sorry about that. I know you all like to just copy paste stuff around and I really like to provide such resources but you just have to rely on the stuff that you see in this video and if it looks different in the code later then then that's just because I, I might have still found some issues about this all. Also, I have not tested this in all doors yet, so it might be that there is still something wrong about that. If that is the case, if you find a mistake, then please write me in the comments or something. I, I would really like to know. And else, um, yeah, let's just solve this together or something. Okay, so this is my processor H, which is where the audio processor sits. And I like to separate my processes into the processor back and the processor. Processor back end is inheriting from audio processor. And that's basically a class where all the boring stuff happens like get name, get tail length, seconds, get name programs, all the stuff that I never really change, it's in the processor backend so that I don't have to deal with it when, you know, messing with the processor. And then there is the processor, which has the methods that you often use, like prepare to play, process block, and process block custom, uh, which is the method that I invented. You can basically think of it like this. There is process block and it like has everything in it, even though it might not be that interesting, like how the macro works, how oversampling works, how mid-side encoding works, polarity flip, dry wet, mix, gain in and unity gain and you know all that kind of stuff. And process block custom has the stuff that is unique to every plugin. So essentially the stuff whose parameters I put into the middle of the plugins when I release plugins. So if you know my plugins, process block custom is, is where this is. So just so that you know that. Now let's go on and actually check out how the processor is being implemented. Okay, so first of all, you see the processor backend constructor with the juice audio processor thing in it. Usually what you see here is that the buses properties are being created on the spot with an input and an output with stereo configuration. But I made a free function that configurates this and then sends it here. And the reason for that is because I needed it to be slightly more complicated. And that's actually very important here. So first of all, buses properties, I'm adding a bus input, adding a bus output. So up until this, it is just like you would expect with any normal juice project. But then there is this PPD has sidechain, which is actually a preprocessor definition. And I will show you what that means very soon. But now let's just check out the rest of the function. It says if this is not a standalone app then we are also adding a sidechain bus and you can already see where this goes whenever i'm selecting the standalone build then it will not build with a sidechain feature and it will also not build with the sidechain feature if this is 
false. So what is this? If you go into the producer of your project and then go here and then uh, scroll down to the preprocess definition, then you can put something into this text field that should just exist everywhere throughout the whole project. And one of these things that I put here is just PPD has sidechain. So I can set that to true if a plugin project that I make should have sidechain and false if it should not. Now why is all this even needed at all, especially this standalone app stuff? Well, the thing is, when you're running a plugin in standalone, what really happens is that there is some sort of invisible host that sort of surrounds the plugin without actually giving you the stuff that you usually expect in a host, you know, like a playhead and a play button and a stop button and and a whole arranger view that's not here, but it's still sort of a host because it has um, an input and an output. But what it doesn't have is knowing the concept of a second input. And that's really annoying when you want to make a plugin project because you want to be able to debug your plugin and stand alone, even if it doesn't make sense the standalone plugin has a sidechain capability. So what I would suggest to the Juice team and what I have suggested to the Juice team is that they add the feature of sort of a pseudo input to the standalone wrapper of the VST3 standalone build, you know, so that I don't have to do all this, but they didn't do it yet at least. So I have to do this. And that's how you actually enable your plugin to build correctly in standalone and in VST3. But you just have to make sure that all your sidechain functionality doesn't exist in the standalone version. And in order to do this, you have to do more than just this. So the next thing that I want to show you is the can add bus method. It is a method that is a virtual function from the audio processor and by default it just returns false whatever is input is and what i'm doing here is i'm saying well if my plugin has sidechain then it is possible to dynamically add an input and else we just keep the default value to false. Also, before even doing that, I'm checking the wrapper type and if it's standalone, then I'm putting false anyway because as you've seen, sidechain functions don't exist in standalone. Note about this function, I don't actually know if I need it. It was just suggested to me in the forum and I added it and yeah, then I had some other problems and then the problems were solved at some point and I didn't check if I actually need this function still since then. So if you can live without this function and don't be surprised. Is buses layout supported? So this works like this. I have a variable for mono and a variable for stereo and a variable for the input of the main bus and for the output of the main bus. And then I say, is this the same channel configuration? So mono to mono or stereo to stereo. If not, then false. I want that to be the same. Then is one of these things, which is in this case, the, the output stereo or mono. And if not, then false. So no surround setups also allowed. That is just something that I like to do because a lot of processors, you can put arrays as the channel thing when you know that it's not going to be more than two, which is very handy. Also for mid-side conversion, that would just make no sense in surround sound. So I like to keep things simple, either mono or stereo. And that's the same for the sidechain. If sidechain exists, if the wrapper type is not standalone, you see the pattern, it's, it's, it's repeating throughout the whole code base. Only then I'm checking if the sidechain input is stereo or mono, and if not, then false. And only if all of this succeeded, then true. So there is only one thing that you have to note here, which is I'm actually not checking if the sidechain input is the same as the main input. So it could be that all the main stuff is mono and the sidechain is stereo. I don't care. I want this to work with those sort of configurations because otherwise it would get really hard for the user to, you know, say they have a mono track because they just recorded vocals and they want to use it on a bass line and the, the synthesizer just outputs stereo. I don't want them to have it so complicated that they have to reroute it to another track first. So that's where I have a little bit of an inconsistency with my approach that I always want to have mono to mono and stereo to stereo. For side chaining, it just doesn't make so much sense in my opinion. But I could be wrong. Obviously, I am still kind of a noob when it comes to programming sidechain plugins and just showing you my current findings and thoughts. So let's go on. Now this is my process block method and I don't want to show you everything, just the stuff that kind of pokes out because a project that has sidechain capabilities does look a little bit different than a normal project. Because normally 
you would have the input buffer and you would use it directly. Let, let's say you want to have the, the underlying array. Well, you would say um, buffer. But um, apparently things look a little bit different here. And the reason for that is here. You have to use this method get bus, which has an argument for is input and an argument for the bus index. So zero is for the main bus and one is for the sidechain bus. And it actually doesn't matter if you choose is input true or false, at least for the main bus, the sidechain bus can only be input. The reason why this is important is the buffer, you are on a stereo track and the sidechain is going in stereo as well. Then you have four channels in the buffer. And now if you run this on certain processors like let's say the dry wet mix, then it can't work like it usually did because obviously you don't want to save the dry state of the sidechain input. You only want to save the dry state of the main bus. But now num channels goes in with four makes no sense. So you have to make a new audio buffer. You can see this is also an audio sample buffer by getting main bus, get bus buffer, and then you input the buffer. Since the main bus knows you want to have the first bus index, it will return an audio buffer that represents the first two channels and it will not copy the data. So you can actually do that in process block and you don't have to have a member of that in your class, which is very handy. A lot of people don't like the juice audio buffer and rather use juice audio Block, but I cannot quite understand why because these features are just really cool and the only thing that's annoying in Juice Audio Buffer is that it has this clear atomic that no one uses but apart from that it's just really cool okay so let's go on so you have the main buffer and now you can do a lot of stuff with that the stuff that you would usually do but one thing that you don't see here anywhere is the sidechain buffer because this is all just the high level stuff you know for example process block bypass if the power button is clicked or the dry wet mix which also contains all the stuff like the gain in and the gain out and unity gain button and stuff stuff like that. Now we're going on and on and then it's getting interesting because now we are on the sidechain side of things. Now if the wrapper type is not standalone then something interesting happens here. And if it is actually standalone and we still have ppd has sidechain we could still do something. So if your sidechain plugin still makes sense without a sidechain input then you could define that in this else branch. But for me personally, it doesn't make sense yet. So that I didn't have that yet. What's happening here? I'm getting get bus this time with one. So this is sidechain bus. And if the sidechain bus is not null pointer and is also enabled, then stuff can actually happen, which is I'm getting the sidechain buffer. And now I'm calling process block custom with my resampled buffer, which is the main buffer, as you know, and the sidechain buffer. Uh, now, what does the process block custom function actually do? I want to show you that because now that you listen to the sound, I'm sure you all want to hear what it's like. First of all, you can see the whole interface of this function is different depending on if ppd has sidechain is true or false. If it's false, then I only have the samples, num channels and num samples. And only if it's true, so if this plugin is supposed to have sidechain, then it has the additional sidechain samples and num channels. Now I'm looping through the channels that I want to actually put the sound in and then I'm calculating the channel that still works with the side chaining by moduloing the channel with num channels of the side chain and then I'm getting the side chain samples of that particular channel and also the samples of that particular channel and then as I've said before I'm just multiplying that and also multiplying by two because stuff gets very quiet when you multiply two signals together usually actually not quite because if the signals correlate a lot then you actually get a very loud sound but let's just say usually it gets really quiet so I just spontaneously decided to multiply it with two but you know this very interesting sound that I created in uh, Bitwig just a moment before it's just like 10 lines or so a bit less than 10 lines so you can get creative with side chaining and make some really cool stuff and um, I think you should do that now